Thank the Lord for his goodness and uh, for uh, Chloe giving us that scripture reading. And now we come uh, to the time in the service where we are going to hear from the word of God. And you know, um, the love that God has given mothers uh, has few parallels uh, in this world. And um, you know, this has been a, a year where that love has been tried uh, for, for many mothers. And this has been a year throughout this pandemic where uh, we've almost seen a microscope on some of the things that mothers go through that the rest of us don't really think about. Uh, it's been a year particularly for our people where many mothers have suffered tragedies uh, because of the tremendous loss that they have experienced. And we, uh, we see that this, is not, this didn't just get invented now. Uh, throughout the scripture, there's examples of that. And uh, we are gonna be uh, treated to the word today by someone who uh, can walk in these shoes uh, that very few of us can. You know, when, when God got ready to explain to the children of Israel uh, his deep love for them, uh, despite how they acted, he went to a man named Hosea. Uh, he called a man named Hosea to be a prophet and give that message. Now, Hosea was someone who had marital troubles and his wife had left him and Hosea couldn't let her go. Uh, he just would not let her go, no, regardless of what happened, because his heart was knit to her in love. And God felt that it took a man like that to fully express his feeling. Well, today we're going to be uh, given the word by someone who has experienced things that uh, most of us just would have to bow, bow under. But we are uh, blessed to have with us today uh, Reverend Wanda Johnson. Uh, you all know her because she's been in this church for years. Uh, we all know the tragedy that she has gone through, but she is able to speak about the love that God has and that he's placed in mother's hearts uh, in the way that very few can. And so I'm going to ask you at this time, my brothers and sisters, if we will receive for the word of the Lord, our own Reverend Wanda Johnson. Amen. 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 Don't stop praising him. Don't stop praising him. Praise God. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren and sisterin to dwell together in unity. I'm grateful on today. I'm grateful to be in the land of the living. Yeah. I want to get myself in order real fast first, if you don't mind. It's all right, take your time, Sister Wanda. I want to give honor to God who is the head of my life, yeah. the one who instructs me, who corrects me, who rebukes me, who loves me yeah. unconditionally. Yeah. All right. yeah. I praise him for an opportunity today to stand before you. I thank Pastor Smith for the opportunity to share a word on today, mm -hmm. uh, a word that will change our hearts, a, a life-changing word because God said that he sent his word to heal us that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Yeah. And so I want to go straight to the word in Exodus, and it is kind of lengthy reading. It's uh, 10 verses, and it's from Exodus, the second chapter, and it reads as follows. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and dabbed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down 
to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, because I drew him out of the water. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hears and doers of his word. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. We thank you that you are a God of love. We thank you, oh God, that you know all things. And God, as we hear your word and as we dig into your word, God, open up our understanding like never before, oh God. God, open up our ears like you did for Samuel, oh God. God, and we thank you right now. God, we ask that you would bind the attacks of the devil right now in the name of Jesus. God, that you would allow your word to have free course in this earth, oh God. God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that one might hear your word and say, what must I do to be saved? God, we thank you on this day. God, we bless you on this day. God, we glorify you on this day. God, we lift you up on this day. God, you say to give you thanks for it is the will of God and so God we thank you we thank you for life we thank you for health we thank you for strength oh God and God for that we give you the praise we give you the honor and we give you the glory in Jesus name we pray and ask it all amen and thank you Lord hallelujah you may take your seat but when you take your seats come on and give the Lord a hand clap bless his name for a minute. You're still here. You're still here. You're still here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. All right. I don't mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, I praise the Lord because he is who he is. He's a sovereign God. In the midst of everything that we go through, you know what? God is still God. And besides him, there is no other. And I won't be before you very long, but I just wanted to point out a few things in this particular passage. And I wanted to start off by reading a letter to a mother. And the reason why the, I believe the Lord brought me to ha read this letter is because oftentimes when we read the Word of God, we look at it as them and not us today. Yeah. And so we have to bring the Word to us today and to make us think about the very things that we're going through, how do we handle those words? And if I did not say it, and I don't believe I did, if Pastor First, if First Lady Sandra is here, I just want to recognize you and thank you for all the prayers, all the encouragement that you have given unto me throughout the years. And to my mother, you know, I love you so, so very much. You know, um, the letter starts out like this. Dear mother, I'm pregnant. 
I don't know what to do. I'm still in high school and I want to graduate. I'm 15 years old. I thought I was in love with him, but maybe I didn't even know what love was. I am not sure what to do. I know as a young mother or a young woman being pregnant that there's choices that I can make. I can make the choice of having the child. I could keep the child and raise the child. I could get an abortion and continue on with my life as if it never happened. I could put the child up for adoption and have someone else raise the child. I have those choices. Maybe someone in your life has had a similar choice. How did you react when you receive that message, that letter from maybe your daughter, maybe your granddaughter, maybe your niece, maybe your godchild, or maybe the one who you never thought that would happen to? Well, Pamacy, I know many of us have passed the childbearing years and have grandchildren and great-grandchildren and even great-great-grandchildren. But that very same letter that I read, you can put maybe that person was on drugs. You can put maybe that person ended up killing someone. You can put all kind of words and things in place of the very letter that I read to you. But the final question becomes, how did I respond when I received that letter? We will look at this text and from this text understand how this mother had to respond with the news that her child could and would be killed. When we look at this text, we find that Joseph was already in Egypt. We find that Joseph had a total of about 70 brethren and family members there with him. It is said that Joseph during that time, during this period, died and the next generation of children began to come up. The scripture tells us in Exodus 1 that the children of that time was very fruitful and they multiplied. It said that even a new Pharaoh rose up who knew not Joseph during this time. And so because he did not know Joseph, the privileges that Joseph and his family once received were no longer available to him and his family. So, so the new Pharaoh came up, and as this new Pharaoh came up, one thing he noticed about the children of Israel is that they continued to multiply. They continued to fill the land. And so because of his insecurities, I want to say, because of his fear, he, he wanted to come up with something to get rid of the children of Israel. Yeah. And, and so what the scripture tells us that he first did was he put taskmasters over the children of Israel. He, he put them in bondage. He wanted to make them slaves. He wanted to make them do hard labor. I, I believe maybe his hopes was that if they did this hard labor that they wouldn't continue to multiply. But the scripture tells us that they continue to multiply. And, and so Pharaoh said, well, I guess I got to come up with another reason, another way to get rid of the children. So he came up and said within himself, and he said that all male children that are born were to be killed. They, they, they were to be thrown into the Nile River. They, they were to be terminated. Their lives were to be no longer. Why? Because Pharaoh's insecurity and his fear that 
they would continue to multiply and that if another nation came against him, that the children of Israel will join that nation and also come up against him. And, and he didn't want to lose his position nor his status. And, and so when we look and come to Exodus 2, and the title of this message is, Say Her Name. Say her name. Well, whose name will you say? I, I can say my mother's name, Bonnie. Say her name. And, and in this particular passage, it tells us that a man from Levi, or the house of Levi, took a wife, a daughter of the Levi. We do not know their names because they're nameless in this particular scripture. But if we go to Exodus 6.20, we find out their names. And if we also look at Numbers 2659, we find a little bit about who they are. We find that the name of the husband is Amram. Hey, the name of the wife is Jochebed. And we find out that Jochebed is actually Amram's auntie. We find that in scripture because during that time, it was permitted to marry a family member, and Amram married Jacobet. In this passage, we also find, and you can look in those two scriptures, and you can also find that Moses was not an only child. He had a sister, and he had a brother. His sister, Miriam, was the oldest, and then he had a brother who was Aaron, who was three years older than Moses. There are some who would say, well, if the Pharaoh was killing all the males, well, why wasn't Aaron included? Well, Aaron wasn't included because the Pharaoh previously was alive and had not gave that order for all males to be killed. And so this Pharaoh, he didn't want any other males or any other children of Israel continuing to populate the land. So that's why he gave the instructions to kill all the male children that would be born during his time. Okay. When we talk about a mother's protection, may I submit to you that Jacobed's name means Yahweh is glory. When we look at this passage, and we can also look and see the similarities to the birth of Jesus Christ. In the New Testament, if you don't mind if I just go there for a minute. In the New Testament, when Jesus was born, the king at that time, or the, you, might, you can also use Pharaoh at that time, the one who was in charge at that time did not want the male Jesus being born. And so he too put out an order, and that was to kill the male children that was born. So, so that's one of the similarities as we continue on. A mother's protection. When we look at this passage and we understand how Jacobet knew the Lord, we, we understand that there was something special about this mother. This mother in Hebrews 11 chapter, the 23rd verse, it says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commands. So that tells us, for one thing about this mother, this mother had faith. Had she not had faith, she would not have been listed in the book of faith, Hebrews 11, with all the other faith heroes. We learn from this that Moses was a beautiful child, it said, in one, past, in one version of the Bible. It also says in, that he was a proper child in Hebrews 11. It says that he was a goodly child. And when we think about goodly, 
and we think about a fine child, we're not just talking about the outer looks. There was something that this mother seen in this child that maybe no one else did. There's some mothers out here today that see something in your child that no one else may see. They may say your child is bad. They may say your child is hateful. They may say all kind of things about your child. But that mother's love sees something else in the child that no one else sees. And because that mother sees something else in that child, that mother will go through great lengths to protect the child. When we look at Yucca Ben, and when she heard the word that all males born was to be killed, she didn't stop right there and just allow her son to be killed. But she protected her son. Scripture tells us for three months she hid the child. And can you imagine hiding a baby for three months? Can you imagine keeping the baby from crying when the mother knows a, cry, a baby's cry. We, we know when the baby's crying because the baby needs to be changed. We know when the baby's crying because the baby's hungry. We know when the baby's crying because the baby wants to be picked up. A mother knows the cry of her baby. And this mother had to deal with three months of keeping her child hidden and let alone not crying. And I thought about that, Pastor Smith. I thought about how could she keep her child three months so that no one else heard his cry. But, but I thought about the protection of a mother. I, I thought about how as that mother goes through great lengths to protect the child, how, how she will do anything she can to keep the child safe, to nurture the child. And, and even Jacob, I'm sure as she was keeping the child safe and she was keeping him so that no one else heard his cry, I'm sure not only was she talking to the child, but I'm sure she was talking to our Father God himself. God, if you just give me one more day to keep him quiet. God, if you just give me another day to keep him quiet. God, if you just help me, God, put a muzzle over his mouth, oh God, or cover the ears of the hearers that want to kill and come against him. God, if you would just cover their ears so they can't hear my baby cry. God, I'm going to continue to have that faith that I have in you. I could imagine how she must have felt trying to hold him from and keep him from crying. Yeah. But she would do whatever it took to keep her child safe. Man. A mother will do whatever it takes to keep her child safe. Whatever it takes to protect her child. You let a problem jump off with your child, a mother is right there. A mother will fight for her children when nobody else will. A mother will not let you talk about her child. A mother will support. She will protect. She will train. She will teach her child a mother's love. A mother. I even think about my mother at times. When I come to her and I want to talk even about my brother or my sister, my mother will get real quiet. She begins discerning where I'm at and what's going on. Is it really me or is it really them, right? A mother, she may not say much at that time, but she's praying and she's thinking. And she's waiting for God to speak unto her. And I'm sure Jechabah was the same way as she was hiding Moses. She came up with a plan 
in the midst of her protecting her son. You know, mothers, how you do it. You come up with a plan. There's times we have our whole plan laid out for our child's life from beginning to end. And then when that plan doesn't end the way that we wrote the plan out, there are times that disappointment sets in. I don't know about you, but that's happened to me before. So if I could just preach it the way that I know that it's happened to me. I don't know about you, but I had a list of things that I was going to have Oscar do as he continued to grow up. I, I had all these things, how he was going to move to Livermore, how he was going to have his own shop. And those are some of the things that he wanted. But I was right there encouraging him on the way. And I had the idea, okay, well, you're not only going to cut hair, but you're going to have your own shop. You're going to have your own business. You're going to learn. But you have a whole list of things at times set up for your children. And then there's times when, because you have them set up, they don't pan out the way that you planned them. And, and, and sometimes you get disappointed. But I want to encourage you today to not be disappointed. And when we look at Jacobet's plan, she had to come up with a way to protect her son. She had to come up with a way so that her son would not be killed. When the three months had came and she had to make the little ark, the ark of safety is what I want to call it. You know, the ark in a sense like Noah's ark, how Noah followed the instructions of God and he built the ark and he was his family and the animals was taken into the ark into safety. This little boy who we do not hear of a name yet in scripture in these verses, Jacobet had not named him, but she made this little ark and put him in it and covered it up. She, she sort of followed the instructions of the Pharaoh at that time. He wanted all the young men to be put in the Nile River, but she did put him in there. But she put him in there in an ark of safety and covered it up and put it right by the bullwishels right there. She, and, and could you imagine, you know, we're talking about Jacobet, but look at what Moses' sister did as well. Because there's times in our lives where some of us are not able to bear children, but yet we are still mothers and godmothers and aunties and, you know, we are the ones who encourage the child. There, there are times when a mother can't have children, and yet her life is still filled with children. And so when we look at even Miriam, as Jacobed placed Moses in the bushes, in the water, Miriam was right there looking she had a watchful eye for her brother. You know, as mothers, you have a watchful eye for your child. You want to know where they're going, who they're going with, how long they're going to be gone. And then when some of the kids come that you see them with, oh, no, that ain't the one to hang around with. That's a mother's love. And, and so as she had him in the water and Miriam had that watchful eye looking to see what happened to her brother, her little brother, she continued to watch. And don't you know God has a plan in all things? Look how Pharaoh's daughter and her maidens came right into that area and saw the little basket in the water. Tell me that that's not God. God works on our behalf when it seems like all hope is gone. God is still working for us. And, and as Moses was in that basket, or the baby at that time, because no name was given, was still in the basket, it is said that as Pharaoh daughter and her maidens came that they saw it 
And as they saw it, they said, fetch it. So, so the maiden got the basket out of ark, out of the water. And, and as they got the ark out of the water, opened it up, and the baby began to cry. And, and I want to just stop and pause for a second because Ephesians 6, 4 is so important for us. And Ephesians 6, 4 says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now, Jacobot was bringing Moses or the baby up the best way that she knew how. But as she planned and had him in the water and taken out of the water by Pharaoh's daughter and the maidens, and as they looked and opened it up, and the baby began to weep, the scripture says, and it says that Pharaoh's daughter had compassion yeah. on the baby. Yeah. Compassion. Yeah. A mother will have compassion yes, for her child. Yeah. In the wrong, in the right, the mother will still be right there yeah. having that compassion, yeah. that love. And we look at a mother's provision for the child. For a mother to release her child into the hands of a stranger, Pharaoh's daughter, must have been one of the hardest decisions a mother can make. When you think about the letter that I read, the three choices that the little woman, the young lady had, she could have put the baby up for adoption. That choice is a choice that could lead and be on her the rest of her life. That choice made to put a baby up for adoption could haunt you, could cause you to feel pain and sadness, could cause you to feel an unexplainable way. And yet, Jacobet had to live with the decision that her son, was no longer going to be her son, but it was going to be someone else's son. She had to live with not being able to tell that very child, I love you. She had to live with not being able to hug that child. She had to live with not being able to kiss that child, not being able to instruct that child, not being able to guide that child, not being able to support and help that child. She had to live through all of that. Those was the plight what she was going to have to face. Don't you know that that's not, a, that's not an easy decision? Don't you know when you think about your child being with someone else, that is a decision that is weighed on you over and over and over and over again every time you see someone else with a child. Because you could be saying, man, that could have been me and my child. When we think about this mother's provision, we think about how in the midst of her allowing her child to go and be with Pharaoh's daughter, we think about how if she would have kept the child, what would have happened? Because there's a flip side to it. She could have kept the child and the child could have been killed or she could release the child and the child could still live. And, and it reminds me of the story, I believe it was Solomon who had to make a decision with the two mothers who uh, had the child, who both had children and one of the child died and they had to make a decision. Uh, well, one of the mothers says, well, just split the child in half. But the other mother, the real mother stood up and said, no, just go ahead. And, and so I'm sure that's how Yuckabed felt that my child will not be with me, 
but my child will still yet be alive. And, and so in the midst of that, as Pharaoh's daughter had the baby, Miriam stood up because the baby was crying. And she said, would you like me to go fetch his mother? Tell me God has a divine plan for everything. And it was so divine, strategic. As, as she was talking to the maiden and to Pharaoh's daughter, they said, yes, go and fetch his mother. And don't you know the very mother that she went and got was the mother of the child? Don't you know it could have been another mother who milked the baby and raised the baby? You know, that did happen. You know, my mom shared a story with me that, you know, even though her mother had multiple children, 12 or 13, and she always had milk flowing. So some of the neighbor's children, when their mothers was dry, would be able to come to my grandmother and be fed. So I, I'm, I'm using that as an illustration to say they could have went and got any mother who had had a baby at that time, but they picked the child's mother, the one who placed him in the ark of safety. And they, she was able to nurture him. She was able to grow him up. She was able to feed him. She was able to sing over him. She was able to pray for him. She was able to talk to him. And I could imagine some of the things that she said unto her son. Son, you're fearfully and wonderfully yes. made. Yes. Son, you're going to be a mighty man of God, yes. fluent in the scriptures. Yes. Son, you're going to walk in purpose and destiny. Yes. Not only that, son, you are created to be a deliverer. Yes. And yet he probably didn't even understand the very things that his mother was talking about. The scripture says that, or the, in the studying that I was doing, it said that he could be nursed by his mother from three to five years old. And, and so in that, as his mother spent time with him, she got to pour into his life. Mothers and fathers, it's important for us to pour into our children's life. It's important for us to love our children, to instruct our children, to nurture our children. I'm sure it took courage for Yochabed after the three or five years was up to surrender the child back to Pharaoh's daughter. But yet as she surrendered the child back to Pharaoh's daughter, I'm sure that she believed that not only her, but that God was going to take care of the child. I'm sure she believed and knew that God had a divine purpose for the child. And so because he had a divine purpose for a child, all she could do is do what Proverbs 22, 6 says. And it says to train up a child in the way that he should grow so that when he is old, that he will not depart from it. And so even if he departs from it, you did your job of trying to train him to fear and to know who the Lord is. Uh, I want to encourage you as I close on today. A mother has the following characteristics. A mother, she, a mother, this mother, Yuckabed, and it is required for us to be mothers of faith. We are to believe God no matter what it looks like. Scripture tells us 
in Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Scripture also tells us that the just shall live by faith. And then it goes on to talk about in Hebrews 11, by faith the elders obtain a good report. And so it's required for us today that we have to have faith no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like. I don't care if your kid is in on drugs. I don't care if your child is in John George. I don't care if your child is in San Quentin. Wherever your child may be, it is required for us to have faith and believe God that God is able to change the situation around. I want to encourage you today. This mother was a devoted mother. As mothers and fathers, we have to be devoted to our children in their successes, in their failures. We have to be devoted to our children to let them know that no matter what you're going through in this lifetime, that if you have Jesus as your friend, that he will stick closer to you than a brother. That he will be with you in the midnight hours. That even when your mother and your father forsake you, that the Lord will take you up. I want you to know on today, Jehoiakabed, Jacobed, she was a woman devoted to her children. She was willing to lay down her life for her children. As parents, we ought to be willing to lay down our lives for our children. This woman disciplined her child, her children. This woman admonished her children. This mother prayed for her children. This mother chose to let her children know that it was important for them to identify with God. I believe Proverbs 31 talks about a virtuous woman. A, a woman who is a great house person, housekeeper. She, she has great skills and abilities. I, I think even Titus talks about a woman. A woman who's able to train the younger women. And, and so when I think about Yuckabed, and I think about Miriam, that even though we don't see it, in the midst of Yuckabed putting Moses in the water, she was still preparing and teaching Miriam how to be a parent who protected and covered their children. Right. When we think about mothers, we must understand that a mother is one who develops and helps their children mature and pulls out the giftings of their children. Yeah. And we know this because when we look at Yucabeth's children, we must understand that Moses became one of the greatest national leaders. Aaron became one of the first Israel's high priests and founder of the Aaronic priesthood. Miriam became a gifted prophetess or poetess rather and a musician. They all had skills and talents and, they, and their mother I'm sure pulled each one of them out of them and worked and helped them in the area of gifting where they was gifted in. And, and so I, I want to say to us as mothers and fathers, you know, the things that we see in our children, we can help develop them by pulling it out of them. So even if your child likes to rap, got kind of quiet out here. Even if your child likes to rap, guess what? You can pull that rapping out of them. Don't stop them and tell them to shut up and be quiet. I remember when Oscar was young and we was sitting in the third row in the church and Oscar had a very, very loud voice. 
Oscar would be singing and I would be covering up his mouth and telling him to shut up, be quiet. No, don't be singing. And Barbara Rowland, Sister Barbara Rowland, was sitting in the front. She looked back at me one Sunday and she said, leave him alone. Let him come up here and let him sing as loud as he want to. And I didn't realize then, but I think about it often now, there are times in our lives where God has gifted our children to do things and we may have stopped that process and that plan because of not wanting them to do it or telling them not to do it. And, and so I'm saying that to say that as mothers and fathers, as we're discerning and as we're watchful of our children, as we learn and we see the giftings that God has gave unto them, that we help develop them. Everybody's not going to be a singer, even though I used to laugh at Oscar when he would sing, when he had an opportunity to sing a couple solos at the church. Maybe he wasn't going to be uh, like Hezekiah Walker. Maybe he wasn't going to be like Stevie Wonder. But the, the, the point is, is that allowing him to be at that time who he was by singing could have pushed him on in that area of music. Yeah. I don't know, right. you know. Right. But as I close and go to my seat, I want us to know, even the songwriter says, a mother's love is so special. It's something that you can't describe. It's the kind of love that stays with you until the day you die. And so as we think about Jacobin, and we think about what she did and what she had to give up, I say to you today, Jesus is our father, our mother, everything that we need. And I encourage you today to call on him and he will give you the wisdom you need to train your child in the way that they should grow. God bless you. It's a wonderful message. Yeah. One that is just a wonderful message. Yeah.